In the previous video, we talked about the quadratic equation, and we saw how we can find two distinct solutions to this equation using this formula. For example, if I have this equation, I can find these two solutions as x1 and x2, and we can see that the square root here is negative, and we are actually dealing with some numbers that are called complex numbers. So, if we separate the square root of minus 1 and write it as i, we can have a real part and an imaginary part denoted by i in which i is the square root of minus 1. The general form of complex number is a plus b i. In this video, we are going to talk about some basic operations with complex numbers like addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. So let's get straight to some examples to see how we can do these operations. The first one is addition. To add two complex numbers, we just add the real parts of them and then add the imaginary parts. And for example, here we have 5 plus 3i, which is another complex number. Now, take a look at another example, which seems a little bit complicated. So, again, we add the real parts, which is minus 3 over 2 plus 2 over 3, and then add the imaginary parts. And after some calculations, you can see that we have minus 5 over 6 plus the imaginary part, which is 2 minus the square root of 2, and it is uh, actually multiplied by i, which is the imaginary part of our complex number. The next operation we are going to talk about is subtraction, which is a little bit like addition, but uh, the difference here is that we have a minus before the second parenthesis, and just we can actually multiply that minus 1 into the parenthesis, and we have instead of 3 plus i, we have minus 3 minus i, and we do the same thing that we did with actually addition. The real part is 2 minus 3, and actually the imaginary part is 2 minus 1i, which gives us minus 1i, and we have a complex number here. Sometimes we might want to add or subtract some real numbers, imaginary numbers, and complex numbers, and it might seem to be a little bit complicated. But you can easily deal with it by just first looking at the real numbers, and pay attention to the minus signs actually before the parentheses and just deal with the real numbers and add or subtract them. Then we can go to the imaginary numbers and add them and here we can actually deal with them more easily. Pay attention that the real part is zero and in the imaginary part we don't have any negative signs. That's because of the minus minus signs before the parentheses I told you before okay minus minus i is equal to i and we can see that we have one two three four five six i's which gives six i and the actually number here is an, an imaginary number so let's get to multiplication here we have i multiplied by i which is i squared or the square root of minus one multiplied by the square root of minus one which is minus 1. For example, if I multiply these two numbers, I get minus 3, which is a real number. We actually multiply two imaginary numbers and we get a real number because i squared is minus 1. So let's multiply these two complex numbers. First, we multiply 2 by 3, which is 6, then 2 by i, which is 2i, then we have 2i multiplied by 3, which is 6i, and then 2i times i, which is 2i squared. And we know that i squared is minus 1, so 2i squared is minus 2. So now we just need to take care of the real part and the imaginary part, and our answer is 4 plus 8i. Now we multiply two complex numbers, which gives another complex number. So let's get to another example. Pay attention that we have four terms and we want to multiply each one to the others. So we have the first term in the first parenthesis to the first term in the second parenthesis. And we actually do the same thing for the other terms. And uh, we have these numbers. So the first one is 6. The next one is 2i. The next one is minus 6 square root of 2i, which is an imaginary number. And then we have 2 times uh, square root of 2. 
So we have the real part of our complex number and also the imaginary part, and this is our new complex number. Before getting to division, I want you to calculate these two multiplications. Look at the first one. These are two real numbers. And in the second part, we have two complex numbers. For the first one, we have a squared minus ab plus ab minus b squared. And these two terms cancel out and we have a squared minus b squared. And for the second one, we have a squared minus iab plus iab and minus i squared b squared. Here, these two terms cancel out and we know that i squared is minus 1. So, we have a squared plus b squared. Now, we want to use this identity to actually help us with the division. But how? Look at this division. We have a complex number in the numerator and another complex number in the denominator. So, if I ask you to tell me the real part and the imaginary part of this number, uh, you cannot tell, you cannot easily tell by just looking at it. So, what we need to do is to multiply this fraction by another fraction, which is 1. And, uh, you know, 3 minus i is called the conjugate of 3 plus i. And we are going to talk about conjugates later. But the answer here in the denominator is a kind of real number. And that is what we want. So if we have a real number in the denominator, we can actually easily tell what the real part and what the imaginary part is because what we are left with in the numerator is just a real part and uh, actually a, a, an imaginary part divided by another real number. Okay, so, uh, so this is our numerator and we have a real number in our denominator and uh, we are left with this number which is 4 over 5 plus 2 over 5i and you can say that real part is this and the imaginary part is that. Now let's take a look at another example, i plus 1 over i minus 1. I multiply the first fraction by another one and it gives me a kind of complex number in the numerator and as you can see a real number in the denominator. So these two cancel out and we are left with minus i. Take a look at minus i we can actually do the same thing for this and we have 1 over i. So we can write minus i as 1 over i and you can see that in quantum physics we use it a lot and we should pay attention to the minus sign. Here h bar is the Planck's constant and i is the square root of minus 1. In the next video I'm going to talk about how we can graph complex numbers.